Hi, my name is Keith Cooper, North Lake Images, and in this video I'm going to address an issue that somebody asked me about recently and I get asked about quite often and it's to do with anti-aliasing or low-pass filters in cameras. Is it something that was important a few years ago and now really probably doesn't matter nearly as much? How much should you be bothered by it? Now, do people still care? Well, obviously, a look at forums and the likes will tell you that there are a subset of people who care deeply about this sort of stuff, about fine detail in images. Um, possibly because I'm a commercial photographer, I care about it from a practical point of view. I understand the theoretical side of it, some of the optics. I, my, I originally went to university to do astrophysics and physics, so my background is quite technical. But when I'm a photographer, do I care about that sort of stuff? No. Could I even remember the maths to be able to work it out properly? No, I'm going to admit, no, it's so long ago, I can't even remember, um, even if I wanted to work out the details of it. Yeah, I, yeah maybe I could, who knows, but um, I never liked the maths, maths that much anyway. But what do anti-alias low-pass filters do? Why are they there? Um, it's, the, the, the problem is that people see what they do, they then think that is needed and therefore that uh, they either need that or they see it as having some deleterious effect on image quality. Now, one of the things is um, image quality. How does it affect image quality? Mm, nobody knows because nobody ever defines what they really mean by image quality. It means something different to every person. But let's go back to the basics of what they are. If you have a digital sensor, it is sampling an image at certain points. They're the pixels of it. Now, because of most cameras have Bayer type sensors, you're actually subsampling that in different for the color information, but luminance information is what it is. So there's a hundred and two megapixels on this GFX 100. There's 50 on this Hasselblad X1D um, Mark II, and there's 50 on this Canon 5DS. Now, they're all high resolution cameras. Low pass filters, what are they doing? Well, if you sample stuff in fine detail, you can get what's called aliasing. It's seen um, in old graphics where you get jagged edges on lines. Aliasing in one bit in, in graphic stuff is smoothing the edges. Anti-aliasing is getting rid of that effect in camera images. Now, you do this by a physical filter in front of the uh, image sensor. Now, this has some interesting optical properties in that it uses birefringent crystals. Uh, these have interesting effects that when a light ray goes into a birefringent crystal, it actually comes out in two slightly different directions, depending on the angling of the crystal and things like that. Suffice to say, these filters are used to introduce a bit of blur. Why introduce a bit of blur? I'll show you an example here from, this is from when I was testing Hasselblad 860 100C. So 100 megapixel uh, sensor, but a larger for, uh, a medium format than I get on the GFX here. So, uh, you know, decidedly larger. It's also why there's a bit of distortion on it from the lenses now. I was testing a um, tilt shift adapter. Now, typical photograph of the kind where I might expect to get issues. What are these issues? Wire fringing. It's where you get colored fringing in fine detail. Now, if you really want to show it, take an oldish sensor with no anti-aliasing filter on it, an old medium format back, photograph something like fabric, much finer. You need a fine check or something like this. Uh, you have very fine detail in it. You will get what's called aliasing effects. You'll get wire fringing. You'll get coloured patterns on it. Now, the problem with this, it's very difficult to get rid of once you've got it. I come back to some of the ways of getting rid of it and why that means it's not quite the problem it was. But here's an image taken, 100 megapixel sensor, looking down the side of this building. Now, I deliberately took this because I know that a long part of this building here, it is a very fine mesh and there's very fine patterns here. And I thought even 100 megapixel, this is going to push it. Now, I know from when I tested the X1D, the original uh, Hasselblad, I took some photographs from buildings and when I processed the images, whoa, there was some distinct colour striping and all the problems you get with um, wire fringing. Um, didn't notice it on this. That's partly due to the sensor 
not much difference there and how it's being processed. It's about the processing of the data. There are change, subtle changes in sensors between cameras, but often not. You know, they say just take camera sensor from one camera, put it in another. There may be changes in, in that. But here's that image there. Now, if I look at detail, we can just about see some color fringing here. Now that is tiny. Um, it is a speck on here. It's about a quarter of an inch of this image here shown at 200%, something like that, to the outside. And you can see that there is part of the fine detail, there is some coloured fringing, and then there's... Now, this image, I just tested this just now, and this is processed with the current version of Adobe Camera Raw. If I went back and processed this with, processed this with older software, uh, you might well get much stronger effects like this. In fact, this is one of the reasons I used to use DxO Optics Pro sometimes on images, just because the way it handled fine detail was different. So you see, just that, whether that filter is there or not doesn't necessarily make that much of a difference. So to get back to does it matter? Here's Canon 5DS. I got this in 2015. I could have got the Canon 5DS R. And the big thing about the Canon 5DSR was that Canon had got rid of the anti-aliasing filter because a lot of people said, oh, the anti-aliasing filter works by blurring detail. I don't want blurring detail. I want all the detail. Well, the problem is that you're capturing an image in digital sampling and that can produce what's called aliasing effects, spatial aliasing effects, where the sampling, where the fine detail is finer than the sampling distance on it. So the, the gap between the pixels. Remember too that it's a Bayer sensor, so there's colour information as well. So the resolution of colour on one of these is not the same as the resolution of brightness. Now, raw software takes, when you process an image, takes care of that. But, so I've got choice between 5DS and the 5DSR. Now, what difference is there between the 5DS and the 5DSR? Now, when I bought it, the 5DSR was about £300 more expensive. Hmm. Um, I was fortunate enough to have somebody who had a 5DSR to compare this one with. And we did some comparisons. We used a good lens. We used the Canon TSE 50, very sharp lens. And we used that lens and we took a series of photos, uh, literally just swapping between cameras, the same lens on the same cameras, same settings, everything. And basically I realized there's very little difference. And if sometimes the image from this is a bit softer, well, you could always sharpen it up a bit. Um, does that mean there was more detail in the 5DSR? Well, it was different detail. Sometimes it was detail that it had made up. The aliasing generates signals which can appear as false detail, hence on some of this ones, these co this colour aliasing that's occurring here. I've seen far worse on this on old cameras and old sensors. Certainly, if you wanted to photograph uh, fashion with lots of fine detail in fabrics, then there were distinct problems with some of the earlier medium format cameras. You had to be very careful in your processing of them. And as I said, it used to be quite difficult to get rid of. So, that seems fairly, yeah, I, I looked at it and thought, right, OK, uh, 300 quid more for a 5DSR or 5D. I got the 5DS and it served me very well. Did I ever think, wow, I wish I had that tiny bit of extra? No. Did I ever begrudge not paying the 300 pounds? Certainly I didn't. As far as I was concerned, there's no significant difference. So the, get back to a more modern camera. Somebody asked me about the R5 and they said, but Problem is, the R5 doesn't have, an, it, it, it does have an aliasing filter, whereas the 5DSR doesn't. And I said, well, that's not strictly true. The 5DSR had an alias, anti-aliasing filter or low-pass filter, and then it had a second one, which mostly cancelled out the effect of the first one and led to effectively, and I say effectively, no anti-aliasing filter in it. Now, the R5, the Canon R5, Canon say that it is better than the 5DS because of what it has an aliasing filter, anti-aliasing filter. But because of the design of it, and you remember I mentioned about the crystals splitting up light into 
two directions when it comes through them. This one splits up into 16 points. And the way that works to spread the image over pixels, apparently according to Canon, it means that the 45 megapixel sensor of the R5 has an AA filter, gives better results than this. Now, I tested the two and I have to say I couldn't see much difference. I certainly couldn't see the fact that there was 50 megapixels in one and 45 in another. That, yeah, that made no real difference at all. Um, but when I looked at it, could I see any significant difference? No. But of course, you might say, what lenses did I test it with? Therein lies a problem. If you've got really, really good lenses and they're set up and your subject is lit properly and the contrast is there, then yes, you can potentially get a bit more detail from the 50 megapixels of this than the 45 mix megapixels of the R5. It's going to be neither here nor there. And I've seen a few people who've looked at it and the variation that seems to be, yes, sometimes you can see it, sometimes you can't see it. Um, is it really worth bothering about? No. Um, and there comes down, you know, the, what are you going to use your images for? Are people going to be judging your images at that scale or at that scale? Now, as a commercial photographer, I know that people judge my images at this scale and very few clients will ever look at them in this sort of detail. And anyway, if the client wanted detailing of this metal work here, I'd take a shot with a longer lens from a different angle or something else and cover it as well so that I had a shot of this metal railings and things. You know, so it would work for that. So you know, that's where the aliasing filters come in. What about software? I mentioned software several times before. Basically software for processing raw images is getting better and better. It's why if I go back to one of the images from my 2003 Canon 1DS Mark I, that's 11 megapixels on a 35 mil full frame sensor, I can get much better pictures by processing a RAW file today than I could in 2003, 2004. Um, yet another reason why I say always keep your RAW files. So it means that any of these cameras I've tested, I always keep the RAW files because if new processing comes along and we're certainly going to see aspects of that using AI based techniques uh, for extracting detail from existing images. Now you may want to say oh it's not real detail but these are digital sensors. You're I have problems with people who are concerned about not real de detail. Um, you know who cares most of the time I think people don't. Um, it's let's say, is it this? Or is it that? And for most people, it's that. Or I should say, for a rather better looking picture taken with the 860, um, that picture there. Now, for that, I really could see detail in the shadows here. This is one of the things that help the images that help convince me that for the sort of work I do, I would get more benefit from a larger sensor. It's why I looked at whether I was going to replace this with an R5 or when, as I eventually did, I went for this particular one here, the GFX 100S, 100 megapixel. You'll notice it has a lower lens on it, has a 17 mil lens. I've been out testing this morning, works really well on this. Uh, it's a GFX fit lens, no electronics in it. So so I had to set the uh, settings in the in the camera here to tell it that it was a 17 mil lens. It means you can use the image stabilizing. Uh, works far better if you tell the camera what the focal length of the lens is. But I mentioned it was all about software. You know, um, it's about what you get from it. Um, this image here, 10 years time, I can probably process it and get a bit more detail out of it. Will it actually make for a better photo? Well, I'm going to say probably not, because at this size, even if I was to print it that size, yeah, maybe I might be able to see if I was going to print it as one of these large prints on the wall here. Maybe I would see a difference, but no, it's not really there. So I'll round off by just considering how important anti-aliasing filters or low-pass filters were to me. Uh, when somebody asked me about this, uh, they said, oh, and of course your GFX 100S, well, obviously that's why you picked it, because it hadn't got an anti-aliasing filter. And I realized that I didn't know 100% for certain whether this camera had a filter or not. It is that important that I spent the money on this camera 
based on the images I got, Fuji lent me one and some lenses a few times before it, and I tested it out, and I decided that the images I was getting from this were better enough than I was getting from this, that I wanted to go that route uh, for my photography. And I didn't even know. I've looked up it and it doesn't have one. Um, as yet, I've got no good examples of images taken with this that do show fringing or any aliasing pro you know, problems. Once again, it's because I'm processing it with new software. So there you go. Um, Beat yourself up over aliasing, anti-aliasing filters, low-pass filters, what they've got and things. Uh, use it to have arguments with people on forums if you like, but don't try and convince me that it makes any practical difference to myself, whether I'm producing images of this size for, for, for to send to clients, or even if I'm making big, you know, big prints like this. Um, yes, they were important. Um, they did make a difference less so these days. Um, so uh, if you've got comments, questions, please do ask on the questions on the on the notes on the video here. I do appreciate that. Uh, please do uh, subscribe to the uh, channel as well if you find it. I've got, uh, so I've been out doing some testing of this 17mm. I've also got Fuji 3264 which I've been looking and I've been taking some shots with the Canon EF815 fisheye uh, and I'm sure there's some other stuff I've been doing as well but um, I do have some real work to do on occasions as well so thanks for watching and um, bye